My name is uh, Fred Sand. I'm professor and chairman of urology at the University of Montreal. So briefly, the, the study that we did, PROPEL, is a randomized phase three study um, that took patients that were metastatic castration resistant in the first line setting, um, randomized one to one, uh, almost 800 patients, randomized to abiraterone or abiraterone plus olaparib. And these patients were first line MCRPC but could have received docetaxel in the hormone sensitive setting, could have pain coming into the study, even on opiates, uh, and could have visceral metastases. And we stratified according to whether or not they got docetaxel and whether or not they had visceral metastases coming in to the study. In terms of results, the primary endpoint of the study was radiographic progression free survival or death. And then secondary endpoints included overall survival, included time to subsequent therapy, uh, second progression or PFS2. Uh, we looked at overall response rates, quality of life, and adverse events in the study. So very briefly, uh, the results were beyond our expectations. We ended up having a 34% reduction in the risk of radiographic progression, which turned out to be 8.2 months, very statistically significant. But of clinical significance, this was exactly the same amount of advantage in RPFS as was seen with abraterone against a pure placebo. And when we looked at independent radiological review, it was actually over 11 months improvement in time to progression. All the other endpoints also favored the combination arm, whether or not patients had had docetaxel prior to coming into the study, whether they not, or not they had visceral metastases, and also importantly, whether or not they harbored a HRR mutation. So patients that had HRR mutations obviously benefited a lot, but as well patients that did not harbor HRR mutations that were tested on tissue, and when tissue was not informative, we had ctDNA to be able to determine the status of the patients. Overall, 28% of patients had a HRR mutation, and almost 70% did not harbor a mutation. Uh, so, so basically, those were, in terms of efficacy, excellent results. In terms of adverse events, there were few adverse events more than grade three, four. The majority of those adverse events were anemia. 15% of patients had grade three, four anemia that was easily managed through supportive care measures. Uh, the rest were really quite minimal, and, and that was very reassuring. And overall, what's important is in terms of uh, quality of life, there was no difference between the combination arm and the uh, monotherapy arm. So we're not adding more detriment to quality of life when we combine these two therapies together. So all I can say about the uh, efficacy of the combination of Olaparib and Abraterone in all comer population that have a HRR mutation was the hazard ratio was 0 0.5, which was excellent. And only about 30% of the patients were actually BRCA patients as expected. So definitely the BRCA patients are not driving all of the advantage in RPFS in patients that are all comer HRR mutated. So our results actually look better than profound, possibly because we're giving it earlier and possibly because we're giving it in combination. Obviously, uh, while we were on the same session, there was the PROPEL data with Abrato and Ol Olaparib, uh, and there was the MAGNET data with Miraparib and Abraterone, uh, both in MCRPC. It's, it's very difficult to compare two trials and try to make clear conclusions why they did not see an advantage in patients that were not HRR mutated. Um, it's possible because they included patients that had already been exposed to hormonal therapy prior to coming in. Is timing important to make sure that both are given together early on? Um, is, are the drugs different? Uh, are the, 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 the drug dosages different? We used full dose Olaparib uh, in uh, the PROPEL study and full dose abiraterone. As far as I know, uh, the Miraparib had to be reduced because of, uh, of, of, of some, some issues in terms of tolerability. So possibly with the HRR non-mutated patients, you might need maximal effect to get that synergistic effect that we see preclinically and that we also saw in the phase two study. So beyond that, it's all hypotheses. Um, 
the results are what they are, um, and, and we're going to have to move uh, forward, hoping uh, that, that we can offer more than what we're doing right now in patients in first-line MCRPC, where unfortunately, they progress relatively quickly and do not respond well to subsequent therapies. So our opportunity is really upfront, early therapy in these patients destined to die of prostate cancer.